guys, I'm Lucy. And I'm Scott. We're from Vicax and we are back with a very special edition of the Week in Books. Welcome back to the Week in Books, or if you are joining us for the very first time, welcome to the Week in Books. Yep. Normally, we would give you a little rundown of our favourite bookish news. Yep, favourite, yep. From out there in the big wide world. But we're not going to do that this week, are we, Scott? What are we going to do no, this week? No, no, I really... Our top ten books of the year. And we are here It's been that. much debated. I think we've been building up to this video for the last... God knows how long, really. Yeah, Just this a is long a time. Well hyped video that you're getting. Yeah, we're trying to cut through the hype. Actually, we're trying to create our own little. We're bit just here. making our own little bit of hype. Um, so we have got our top ten books of the year. Actually, we haven't talked about how we're going to do this. We're going to do. Oh, it's five each. It's five each. So it's sort of yeah. yeah. Um, no guesses. Uh, no prizes for guessing that Scott's is mostly non-fiction and mine's yeah, mostly fiction. Is, are we allowed what? to say that? Is I don't that think really spoiler? spoiling much. I've, I've got four non-fiction. And we're going to count them down, aren't we? Yeah. I think, how we did, I think that's how we did it last year and it worked quite well, but last year we only went three each. <gasps> oh, we upped year, our this, game. This, this year we, we, well, we've... Well, read um, loads more this year. Yeah, no, that's And true. it's been a good year, actually, overall. Because yeah. I've read very few stinkers. I've read a few stinkers, but actually the balance has I've been... I've read a reasonable. ...way... You've read more stinkers than I have, actually. Yeah. Your balance is like more like that. Yeah. Mine's more like that. It's all good. Um, right, so do you want to do number five, number five, number four, number four, or do you want to do five, four, three, two, one? No, Which, five, gonna... five, four, four, three, two. Okay, you go first. Okay. So in at number five. In at number five, and for any of um, you have watched the video where I suggested books for Lucy to read. Oh, yeah. Um, you would have seen this one. So this is Night by Eli Weissel. So it's, I was about to say, YA novel. It's not at all. It's non-fiction, and it just follows the, the life of a young boy impacted by um, the, the Holocaust, really, in um, in Nazi Germany. So, sure, Number powerful book. And I think the other thing that's probably worth saying is all five, all ten yes. of these books are um, have had full reviews, so we'll link to them below. Yeah, so we're not we going to go gonna... through and review all ten no. books, don't worry, but we will link reviews to all ten yeah. books in the comments down below. And if you've read them, please do share your thoughts. Yeah, and then I would just say, with, with Night, the main reason it's there was... It's actually a pretty famous book and it wasn't published last year by any, any means. It's like written in the 1980s. But I just found it really powerful for how short it was. Really packed a punch. I, I, and it, yeah. I can, what more can you want, hey? Exactly. So, there you go. That's my number five. So, my number five. Um, for anyone who did see the video where Scott um, made some recommendations of what was going to cut in to my top five, he recommended me Night. Unfortunately, that didn't quite do it for me. Should I tell him why? Okay, go okay, so the reason that Night didn't make my top five um, was that although I thought it was beautifully written and incredibly powerful, I've read a lot of fiction and non-fiction around the Holocaust and I didn't feel that this book added to my knowledge. It wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily giving me something new. Had I read it first, it yeah. probably would have blown my socks off, but to the overall body of knowledge that I had, mm -hmm. it didn't add enough that I thought it warranted my top five. But what did, that Scott recommended, was Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. Really liked this one. Um, lots of other people really liked this one. It's run an awful lot of prizes, including the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. Um, and it is a story, um, it's kind of like a family story at its heart, um, but also one that takes in loads and loads of mm. contemporary issues like politics and terrorism and sort of, you know, very contemporary. Social cohesion in Britain. You liked it, didn't you? Yeah, it was. It was probably of, of the literary prizes I read this year. It's probably my favourite book of, of the literary ones. So, well, there yeah. you go. High praise indeed, from Mr. It Cook is James. indeed. It is indeed. But it, the other interesting thing, it is a Greek retelling, isn't oh, yeah, it? But it I didn't actually. even realise. I read the whole book and didn't even realise it's a retelling until I saw it as one of the prizes. Very easily. Yeah. And I don't know. The story firsthand that it's based on. I can't even remember the name of it right now, but it's based on a Greek myth, uh, Greek retelling. Can't remember what it was. We didn't really know it. No, doesn't. I, I didn't know until I saw it when it won the Women's Prize. It was announced. So, so you probably get like a whole new level of depth and appreciation to it if you actually know that story as well. But there you go. Um, would you like to do number four? Yeah. So, so number four for me is Nine Lives by Eamon Dean with Paul Crookshanks and Tim Lisser and writing it. So. 
basically it follows the life of a man dean which is a pseudonym and he was essentially the the a british spy so he he originally was a terrorist or worked for was went on jihad um but he got flipped and didn't agree with the al qaeda mindset and the way it was going so it just follows his story and for me the reason this is so it's really impactful really really insightful actually to a lot of the conflicts which have um shaped the western world over the last 20 years or so it really it really does take you on a journey through through the eyes of someone who's been there and done it and it's often the other, other perceptions we don't really see so much in the western media and i found it a really fascinating book and really detailed it took me a long time to read it um there's lots of detailed footnotes, and I found myself reading all of it, so it re really is, yeah. It's got a real skim reader, if he gets half the chance. So to say that he's read all of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's high praise indeed, Yeah, isn't no, it? really, really good. So, my number four, um, unfortunately, my number four had a little accident, um, and it is The Toy Makers <laughs> by Robert Dinsdale, and I ripped the cover. It was a beautiful cover with lovely little windows here, and I ripped it. I'm very sorry. Um, now this is a sort of magical realism story that um, is set in a toy shop, uh, initially around the time of the First World War and then afterwards. And um, I feel like I need to do a little disclaimer on this book because I'm actually not sure whether I said it before and Scott told me that I really, really should do, but I know the author. Um, so hello Rob, um, I feel like it's only right that I share that, but it makes it onto this list um, on its merits alone because I just thought the world building and the magic in it was so incredibly real that it just has stuck with me because I read it all the way back in January and usually I don't really love books with magic in them. I read them and I like them, but I go, it's not real though, mm -hmm. is it? But the magic in this just creeps up on you um, in such tiny little increments that you totally buy into it. And I loved it. And I think people like, um, I don't know why I'm holding it up when it's ripped. Um, people who like books like The Night Circus um, and, and books like that that have sort of got this magical element in it will really love this. Also, perfect for Christmas. So there you go. That's why that made my book. Yeah. Excellent. So we go to number three. Yeah. So number three is my only fiction book, and it's actually a recently read <gasps> you one, guys! but wasn't one of the ones Lucy recommended to me. So it wasn't. Um, Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Who saw that coming? Who saw that coming? Not me it's actually. Not me. not me either. Like the first Brandon Brandon Sanderson book I've read. Not. I'm not. I wouldn't normally say I'm a sci-fi fan either, but for me it was yeah. just. Very well written. It's not, when I say well written, it's not sort of going to win any literary prizes, but it clearly written by a pro. And truly, it follows the story of Spenza, um, a journey through, I would say, flight school, trying to become a starfighter pilot um, in this battle. And, and, and I'm really fascinated. What did you describe it as before? It was like Hunger, oh, Games. Hunger Games meets. Um, Throne oh. of Glass meets Star Wars. Hunger really? Games meets Throne of Glass meets Star Wars. That is all you need to yeah. know about that book. Yeah, and, and, and it's great. And then, like, all, all through my childhood, until I got dodgy eyesight, um, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. So may, maybe oh. maybe that's why I got so high up. But, Anyone uh, seen Little Miss Sunshine when the guy discovers <laughs> he's um, colour blind? Crushing. Crushing, age, age you 12, guys. Age 12, you get told you can't follow your dreams. Yeah, so so you, you end up on BookTube talking about... <laughs> Brandon Sanderson. What a come down, eh? What a come down. Yeah. Um, we're very happy, folks. Um, would you like to read my number three? <gasps> right. I have picked Transcription by Kate Atkinson. Now, this is the story of a teenage spy in the Second World War um, and then her life afterwards when um, she's all grown up and the past comes after her. And do you know what? I just picked this book because it was such incredible fun to read. And I think sometimes fun does not get really? enough credit. There isn't really any deep and meaningful, profound message in this book, like most of my favorite fiction has, but this is just so well written, so well executed, and you can just lose yourself and have a riotously good time. And I think that is why it deserves its place on this list. There you go. 
There you go. Well done, Kate. Well, we're getting into Loved the business it. then. Now. Yeah, we are. Oh, it's good fun. And right. this was hard, actually, going through these books to choose your top five. It really and was. They, and they have changed because I think also the order, the order of mine. The order has definitely changed. Has changed over a year, and I think it for me now it's the ones that have stayed with me. That's often the case, isn't it? Are actually the ones that are, are, like I think night was higher up when when I did this early in the year, whereas actually now I'm like actually. I think time is a very good measure of how much you like something. And actually sometimes when I've done the reviews, like really soon after I've yeah. read the book, I think like a week later or two weeks later or a month later, I'm not gonna do reviews like three months later, but how you feel about them changes. And sometimes it's not the ones that you enjoy most at the moment, is it? It's the ones that stick with you. Yeah. That, you know, make so, the difference. So yeah, so, so for me at number, number two, two is Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. And it's, an, uh, so John Carreyrou is an investigative journalist and he wrote a story that basically, in a newspaper that, that broke or pointed people in the direction of a company called Theranos, which is a blood testing, or startup, or it was, um, whose CEO, Elizabeth Holmes, was infamous and was alleged to be, she, I think she was like 22, destined to be a billionaireess, um, was being lauded as the next Steve Jobs, but basically it turns out that the whole company is a lie. So their blood testing um, kits didn't work, they were giving out fake results, and a whole host of other stuff, which if you think about what people use blood testing for, it could potentially be like seriously mm. impactful to people's lives. It could, she was it could, gutsy in her claims. Oh, just, just absolute claims. And just why I found this book so fascinating, not just because of the story of it, like infamous story, it's just more than insight just to how startups work. The whole um, meth methodology of raising serious amounts of investment from seriously rich people, they just don't care. Like, some of the people who invested in the comp this company are big name people, people high up in the US government to this day, I think. And it's just truly fascinating. All these people had their wool pu pulled over their eyes by, at the time, a 21 year old. It's just truly, truly fascinating. Yeah, How I mean, they she's can, obviously like, a very clever 21 year old. I know. She can obviously sell. That yeah. That is what the book actually, she, she's clearly like a ridiculous salesperson. Um, the thing is, she was literally just selling snake oil, like quite quite literally. Um, There's going to be a film made out of it. Exactly. Well. It was such so, a compelling story that Hollywood has snapped it up, yeah. haven't they? So, so, so yeah, but we will be I, would never, I would never have thought it would be top 10 when I started reading, but it's the fact that I can still... Still remember it quite vividly. And you still get like excited when you talk about it, don't yeah. you? Put a bit of passion in there, a bit of yeah. passion. Oh, yeah. so there you go. I'm going to stick these ones down because I've got a big pile forming. Right, ready my turn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number two, I've chosen The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Now this was one that actually, like you said a minute ago, when I first read it, I was like, oh, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. But it's got better as it sat in my mind. Um, for a few reasons. It is a retelling, it's another retelling um, of the story of the Trojan War, but through the eyes of the women who were imprisoned in the camp. Um, specifically, I think her name was Bryce's, I can't remember. Specifically Bryce's, I'm gonna go with that. Um, oh no, now I feel like I should have checked. Anyway, it doesn't matter what her name was, because this is a book, actually, that is so incredibly good because she takes this um, really ancient Greek myth and makes it so incredibly relevant to today because actually it's a book about power um, more than anything. Um, and everything in it, the, all the behaviours you can see in modern life and I love that. And it is absolutely um, astonishingly written. I'm going to read you a little bit if that's all right. Just, just one paragraph, because if you, this is to me, just one of the best paragraphs that I've read in a very long time. And it's about, it's from the perspective, Scott's like rolling his eyes, like, what are you doing with your life? Um, I'm reading, I'm reading them an extract. It's only a short one. Um, he didn't know this was coming else, he'd have told me not to do it. Um, so she's um, captive to um, a man in the camp and she's, she's terrified. So this is a book about power. I'm gonna read you this bit. He's gonna edit this out, it's fine. Yes, I watched him. Every waking minute, and there weren't many minutes, I allowed myself to sleep in his presence. It's strange, but just then, when I said I watched him, I nearly added, like a hawk, because that's what people say, isn't it? That's how you describe an, an intent, unblinking stare. But it was nothing like that. 
Achilles was the hawk. I was his slave to do what he liked with. I was completely in his power. If he'd woken up one morning and decided to beat me to death, nobody would have intervened. Oh, I watched him all right. I watched him like a mouse. And I just think, oh my goodness, like taking those cliches and turning them on their head is just, oh, it's so good, it's so good. Um, and if you like writing like that, this is a good book. Oh gosh, it's really, really well written. And I had another thing I was gonna say about it and it's gone out of my head because I'm just like, oh, so well written, I love it, I love it. So there you go. Um, Silence the Girls by Pat Barker, who is a good writer, heavens above. Oh, I think that's on the shortlist for the Costa, Costa yeah. isn't it? So we'll have that one, please. Make it through to the other short shortlist. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Okay, so drum roll, and oh, yeah. it's going to be a big anticlimax because I don't have the book. Because he doesn't have the book. He likes this book so much, <laughs> I actually he gave it, it away. He gave it away. When I like a book, I'm like, no one can borrow that book. No one is allowed it. I, like, did, I didn't deliberately know. give it away. I lent it to somebody and they haven't returned it, mother. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah. Mother, yeah. So I will put up a screenshot around here somewhere. Ta-da! Um, it's this book. It's Grit by Angela Duckworth. So, so Grit is... Almost like the product of years of worth of research into successful people. And it ultimately what Angela Duckworth is trying to tell is it's not necessarily about talent and it's not necessarily about hard work. It's about finding something you really enjoy. So enjoyment is critical. Um, find something where probably your talent does align a little bit. Um, but then <laughs> the most important thing of all is grit, which is essentially perseverance. And that by just sticking with something for longer than other people do, the rate people drop out and stuff like that, you you naturally become good at it, but actually that's the way to be successful is just sheer grit. Um, truly impactful. There's a lot of stories in there that I personally could relate to, situations where I hadn't been gritty in my life, situations where I had, and I, I just, everything in red there, it just made, it made common sense, but obviously it's easy for stuff to make common sense when someone's told you, like someone's writing it, I didn't come up with it, just reading this going, oh, that makes sense, that makes sense, and like, again, as with Bad Blood, it's something that stayed with me. Um, yeah, you read that one like right at the start of the yeah. year, didn't you? And so. I still think uh, it's, there's, there's, and there's a lot of life lessons in there I, I would, I would, well, I'm gonna keep with me. So. And I think the second that you shut the shut the fat page on your book, you were like, this is gonna have a job to beat this for my book of yeah. the year, wasn't it? That was one of the ones where you, you did know straight away. You were yeah. just like, oh, yeah. amazing. Time for my favorite book of the year, folks. My favorite book of the year. Yeah, I don't think a drum roll is necessary for anyone who already subscribes <laughs> to our channel because it is Bear Town by Frederick Barkman. Love this book. Um, it is about a small town um, in snowy Sweden, in the middle of nowhere, who love hockey. Um, and their entire lives in this town revolve around hockey. And then a terrible act of violence tears the town and the hockey team apart. And this book, oh, I just love this book. I love this book. So very, very much. This book had me sobbing my heart out, sobbing my heart out in the car, on the top story of a multi-story car park, in the pouring rain, as I made myself later and later to collect my children from a birthday party. Um, because I just didn't want to go out the car, partly because I was a hideous mascara streaked mess, um, but also because I just couldn't put it down. And how many books can you say that about? How many books just really, you know, get you in the heart. I loved it. I really, really thought it had enormous, in, enormous. So I loved no, no, it so enormous. Making, making it's up, making me yeah. make up words. I loved it so very, very much. And then I gave it to Scott, and I said, Scott, you're going to love this book. And then what happened, Scott? It was all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's like it's all right. Yeah. It's all right, guys. I think I can't go into much without completely spoiling. The book where I can I just think... Don't spoil you, the book. We're not going to spoil the book. No, no, you, you just said it's an act of violence. I just think, and there's been quite a few real world examples I'm aware of, where I think the reaction's quite different to what happens in that book. And really and irritatingly, really irritating me, he pulled out those real world examples and I was like, oh yeah. He, so, had, a, he had a point. He did have a and point. And I, I just couldn't see... But, but, yeah. I didn't want to hear them, but he kind of did have a point. We won't tell you... We can't tell you what Scott's been. No, was. and and I, and I also thought there was a plot hole as well. But yeah, well, they're related, I guess, really, aren't they? Um, and we did think we did mention we were going to do a whole video 
um, which somebody in the comments magnificently titled Bear Town Throwdown. Yeah. Um, but it probably doesn't warrant a whole video. But all we need to say is that I thought it was wonderful. Scott thought it was okay. Uh, no, I, I could see, like, in terms of the structure of the book, the writing is great. And I can see how it would have mass appeal. Just for me, I was let down more. I actually quite like the sports side of it. Um, <laughs> which I knew you would, yeah. Um, but then you've pretty much only got two or three games or whatever like yeah, I wanted yeah. more of a season but that's just he wanted just the me. whole season but, uh, <laughs> but but um but yeah I, I just think the reactions in real in real life would have been different I can see his point um but it didn't spoil the book no? it didn't spoil the book so um still wins for me yeah um and there you have it what do you do when you get to the end of a list it feels like such an anti-climax um Go read any of the ten. I think any of the ten. I think there's a good book in there for, for everyone. There is something for everyone in their book. From sort of, well, we've got fiction, we've got non-fiction, we've got like high-end literary stuff, really. Uh, well, night, is, night, night is literary as. Really? Yeah. And Silence of the Girls is literary as. Also dark and harrowing. We've got that end of the spectrum. Yeah. Completely covered. Um, We've also got, you know, the slightly lighter end with transcription covered. And um, we've got the more more commercial, accessible fiction covered with Bear Town. We have got something for everyone. Um, not on purpose. <laughs> it does sound like we've done it on purpose. Yeah. But we haven't. And anyone who's been watching our channel for, for the whole year um, will know that we love these books. So there you have it. I'd love to know your favourite books of the year. I'd love to know them. I would so love yeah. to know them. So please do share them in the comments below. Anything else? No. Just to say, actually, I did read... Little Brothers, the one recommended, and it just, it, I thought it was oh, good, yeah. it just didn't quite yeah. make it, and I think... Same for Dark Pines, it's a good book, um, but it, you know, these were just, yeah. to me... It, you're up again, it was, it was a tough challenge trying yeah. to get in Sorry. to the top five. Um, but we did actually both, in, yeah, so, um, again, anyone who doesn't know what we're doing, um, in one of our videos, people recommended us books they thought we would like in a bid to make it into our top five, um, and they were both great reads, but didn't quite make it's the cut. But yeah. It's tough to get into those it was, top fives. It was tough. There you go. Anyway, should we let you go? Yeah. Because you've probably got lots of these videos to watch now, haven't you? Have fun. Um, and yeah, please do tell us your favourite books and we shall see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. And, you know, I, well, I was going to do a big dramatic thank you very much for the watching all year, but we're not quite at the end of the year yet, so I'm going to save that. Should we say bye? Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.